very good morning children so i hope you have seen the yesterday's class and uh, where we talked about the vertebrae right so it's a subphylum vertebrae and also we have seen the classes which are divided right so the classes were uh, amphibians pisces that is uh, fishes and then apes okay that is uh, birds and also we have seen all those divisions and also and uh, reptiles also we have seen them and also we have seen the characters also right so today we are going to see the last class of the subphylum vertebrata okay now and that phylum is called as the mammalia and mammalia is a very very important group here and now this if you see this mammalia it is divided again into uh, three different uh, uh, kinds and all one is land mammals second one is marine animals and third one is flying animals okay so if you can see here there are land animals land mammals okay and there are marine animals and also there are flying mammals okay so here uh, let me write these are mammals so now when you come to this mammalia right so when when you come to the mammals and all know like when you especially come to the land mammals how you can identify that it is a mammal so the best way to identify it as a mammal is it has the outer ears and also it has the four limbs okay it has four limbs and also they have the outer ears limbs in the sense like no hands and legs right so if you take the animals they have the four limbs and the hind limbs so this is about the limb so how you can easily identify the mammals which are land living the best thing is that they have the outer ears the ears will be out like that okay they don't have the inner ears ears they, you can see the ears externally right they have the external or the outer ear and second one is that they have the four limbs right they have four limbs so now when you come to the land mammals when you come to the land mammals again they are divided into three types one is marsupials primates and rodents if you can see here they are marsupials primates and rodents okay so when you come to the marsupials when you come to the marsupial marsupials are those animals which carries their babies in the sac like structures okay so when when i tell you that an animal which carries the baby in its sac like structure what comes into your mind the only animal which comes into your mind is the kangaroo right kangaroo so this kangaroo is the animal which has a sac like structure okay towards the front side of the body and where it will hide its animal where the animal's baby will sit there and it will hide there so that is how they will protect their young ones so those kind of animals are basically called as the marsupials and these kangaroos you know like where you will find them most yes you find them in the australia right and that's the reason why even australian players are also called as the kangaroos right so these are the endemic species these are the endemic species which are limited to one particular region so the first example the first one which you are studying in the land mammals is the marsupials marsupials are the animals which carry their babies in the sac like structures and uh, the best example you can take is the kangaroo right now coming to the second one second one is the primates second one is the primates in the primates so like you can find the well developed hands and also you can find the well developed legs here right the hands are developed the legs are also developed okay and moreover they can judge they can judge from a distance so whatever the danger which is coming from the distance they can easily judge it so whatever the situation is they can easily judge from the distance so that is the major like the factor which you can see in the primates and moreover these are animals which are completely intelligent in nature right they are absolutely intelligent they use the intelligence right so if they have to okay identify the danger and all know so it's not that is if they only have the intelligence if they have only uh, the uh, cleverness and also they can easily identify the danger which is going to come or whether anything any animal or something is coming so whether it is a friend or a enemy or something which is going to kill them or which is going to make a friendship with them so they can easily identify so that kind of intelligence is there in the primates right and then these animals are basically called as the social animals because they have a very good social life right they they stay together right that's the reason why we call them as a social animals okay and also they 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 live socially in such a way that they form bonds 
they also form the bonds right they have the friends they have the like you know mates and also so that each and every animal will form the bonds and also that kind of nature is usually seen in the group which is called as the primates <coughs> so what is the best example for the social animals which comes in the primates okay and also the animals which have the intelligence which can judge by uh, like judge from a particular distance basically it is man basically they are monkeys right monkeys and man all apes chimpanzees right gorillas all these come in group which is called as the primates so these are all primates you know, they are very intelligent they have the well developed hands and legs they can judge by distance and also they are intelligent they are social animals and also they form bonds between the between others so that is how like you know primates becomes a second group of the land mammals right now coming to the third group that is the rodents that is the rodents what are rodents the rats the bandicoots right all these animals which now which bite the food okay which bite okay those kind of uh, animals so like they come into the group which is called as the rodents okay they have the see incisor teeth right this you know the uh, teeth like there are four different kinds of teeth in our mouth right one is the incisors second one is the canines and third one is the premolars and fourth one is the molars so especially if you take the rats and all they have the incisors and they will bite the food that is the nature of the animals right, which which belong to the group called as the rodents right and even uh, they will bite the very hard foods even if you find it is a really, a really hard food and all right these animals will have the capacity even to bite those kind of food materials also they use these incisor like teeth as a chisel okay so the best example what you can take is the rat the rat is the best example for the group which is called as the rodents what is the group called as rodents so mammalia like no in the mammalia you can find three types of animals here right one is land mammals second one is the marine mammals and third one is the flying mammals here also mammals location sounds and also and these sounds are also called as the biosonar sounds and because of these sounds they will be and they will be able to identify the objects or the other animals which are in the way and also even when they move in the pitch dark also they will be able to identify the things which are coming as the obstacles and also that is what eco location means right that is also called as the biosonar right that is the first thing second one is the these are the nocturnal animals nocturnal in the sense which usually stay in the night they they go out in the night time they sleep in the daytime and they go out in the night time so they uh, usually live in the very dark places and all for example if you see uh, caves and all okay in the caves you can see lot of bats right all these bats so like they only come out in the night time they wouldn't they don't come in the daytime so they are the nocturnal animals so which are uh, which like the darkness and all which stay in the dark okay so and most mostly like you know their eyesight will be absolutely low absolutely the right side will be absolutely low okay that's the reason why they use this echo location sound so that they can identify the things which are in front of them when they fly when they move around this is uh, what it is uh, really useful for them to identify the uh, enemies right and also identify the obstacles and what not so that is the echo location and also they are the nocturnal animals and these are the animals like you know, which live in the hollows of the tree and also in the case as we have studied so the best example what you can take is the bat so this is the this is all about the vertebrata right in the vertebrata we have already seen the we have already seen the fish we have seen amphibians we have seen reptiles we have seen okay and then we have seen the mammalia we have seen the apes okay in mammalia we have seen the different groups here so all these are the examples of the vertebrata so vertebrata is a sub phylum of chordata and uh, these like you know, all these are the classes which are present in them so that is how we come to the end of this vertebrata right so now we will go to the new topic the next topic right children so by this we come to the end of this unit and especially i want to tell you that the nomenclature which is over here already we have discussed in the previous topics i have explained about the nomenclature where you can give the binomial nomenclature one particular part will be of the genus and one particular part will be of the species right genus will be written in the capital letters and the uh, species will be written in the small letters a genus will have some animals in that group and species we are talking only one about one particular animal right so, so nomenclature like no already we have uh, seen that the carolus linnaeus has uh, 
like no he discovered the process of the uh, binomial nomenclature binomial in the sense two names right giving nomenclature in the sense giving name two binomial two nomenclature giving names right so that is how we also study the binomial nomenclature and by this we come to the end of the unit so uh, before uh, leaving the class and also i would like to uh, come to the page number 69 here where you can see the common name of the potato which is given as bangal dumpa and hindi name is alu and tamil name is urulakis hangu and uh, marathi name is batata and uh, odia name is uh, bilati alu so now all these names are like people cannot understand so i as i have already studied uh, as i have already taught you that when scientists uh, sit together i know if they say batata alu okay or bilaiti alu or bangala dumpa alu or whatever the names and all so every person cannot understand this right they want a particular name for the organism or particular name for the uh, vegetables or the fruits and also that when they talk about something they will completely talk about that particular thing for example uh, let me tell you this very simple example which i always tell that if there is a mango okay so if you if you call in, in if you take hindi they call it as aam if you take telugu they will call it as mamadikaya right and if you take english they call it as mango so just assume that in japan in chinese and in tamil and uh, other marathi and all like different languages there are there, there are different names for the mango so now just assume that all the scientists will sit together to discuss something about the mango they want to improve the crop of mango or improve some uh, characters of the mango so they want to talk about the mango so a telugu man a telugu scientist will get up and say that okay now i am going to talk about the mamadikaya so the other person who knows only hindi will say that i don't know what is mamadikaya and japanese will not understand what they are talking about about which food they are talking about or which vegetable they are talking about so it becomes really very hard for everybody to understand what is the name right because each and every language they have the different names there are different names for the different uh, vegetables or the fruits and also they need a common name they need a common name for one particular vegetable so that every whole world will approve that and that will be called as the like no scientific name so that is how each and every animal each and every uh, bird and each and every vegetable or fruit or whatever it may be they are given a specific name and that name is called as a scientific name scientific name usually has the name of the genus and also name of the species right for example homo sapiens homo is the genus sapiens is the man so usually man is called as the homo sapiens okay like that mangifera indica azaridacta indica which we called as a neem tree is called as the azaridacta indica and the maize is called as the sea maize right so like this uh, rice is called as the oryza sativa so like this each and every uh, thing which we usually eat okay which we know they have their scientific names and also these scientific names it make, it makes people it, it makes very easy for each and every body to understand what we are talking about so there will be the common name for a vegetable or anything around the world so when scientists sit for discussion so when they talk now they will say mangifera indica so everybody will understand that they are talking about the mango if they say azadiracta indica they are talking about the name if that is if they say about the z maize that means they are talking about the maize plant so everybody will get an i very easy idea so that they can understand it more better and they can uh, like you know they, they can talk about that particular thing very easily okay children so i think by this we come to the end of the unit right so maybe in the next class we will uh, discuss all the questions from this uh, unit and also we'll try to uh, have a small test in this particular group also right uh, especially coming to the animalia right so until then see you children have a great day goodbye see you all